house fan friends welcome back to my youtube channel today we're going to talk about something that is so precious to my heart and that is alocasia as you can see i have buried myself in mine here's one oh there's some cactus behind me that is poking into me it does not feel good here's the big leaf we're gonna talk about alocasia and we're gonna talk about everything about alocasia. In this video, we will talk about soil, level of difficulty, humidity, general care, watering. What is poking me? Oh, it's my paper spine. Oh, this one, he's poking me. Welcome to my alocasia area. Ashley's alocasia. I thought about making that my Instagram handle back when I was picking alloc or not alocasia names, back when I was picking the names for what my Instagram is gonna be. <laughs> so make sure that you like this video, make sure that you subscribe if you're not already subscribed. My channel, we do all the plant stuff. So if you like plant content, we're here. If you like animal content, we're here. I have a cat who is off screen right now. Say hi, Raven. <laughs> Did you hear that? I'll turn the volume up maybe. She's sitting on her little couch. Anyways, right off screen, you can't really see, I do have my alocasia cupria here. Let's just jump right into it. I guess I should identify these for you. So this is my alocasia micholiziana. Oh, but the, the short name that everyone calls it is alocasia frydeck. This is alocasia adora variegata. This is my favorite leaf all the way down here. And this is alocasia cupria. Actually, I own a Zebrina but she is being rehabbed right now over there. So she's not in frame. Is that better? <laughs> Alocasia Ashley. In case you're wondering, uh, I have pretty bad ADHD and filming these videos is always hard because I have to stop whatever I'm doing in order to film them. So lately in videos, I've had an AirPod in listening to music as I film so that it helps me stay focused and get less distracted. I'm listening to Dance Monkey by The Tones and I. I've spent the last two hours preparing this video because I want it to be comprehensive. I wanna talk about everything. Let's start with soil composition. My alocasia soil mix is pretty heavy. It's a heavier mixture. It's very much five, six potting soil. And I know that sounds like such a weird fraction to throw out there, but I just really want to stress how little other soil is in here. It's so much just potting soil. It's like five, six potting soil and then like one, six orchid bark. It needs to be a thicker mixture. It will drain well as long as you've got a good pot, but both of my soil mixtures are very, like almost all just potting soil with a little bit of orchid bark in them to give them that that extra bit of drainage. This one is all potting soil. Now, I do that because small alocasias dry out really quick, giving it a nice moist area to live in. It keeps it keeps them from needing to be watered 24 seven because these guys are water monsters. It took me a while to figure that out. Currently we're all spider mite free, but it was a process to get here. This one suffered. There's some spots here and there. So another important thing with soil composition is don't aerate your alocasia. This is because alocasia come off in buds and they really have shallow root systems. So like they obviously go down to the bottom of the pot like normal plants, but they also have roots that are kind of along the top. Whereas like philodendron and monstera roots kind of go all the way down to the bottom and then they kind of wrap down there. Alocasia roots kind of fill the whole pot. If you aerate your plant, you kind of risk damaging, breaking off pups because alocasia grow from bulbs. So it's gonna shoot off baby bulbs here and there that you can break off, have a new plant. But if you aerate, you're probably gonna ruin whatever it's got going on. I've never aerated my alocasia. I never plan on it. They're way too delicate for me to just go sticking some chopsticks in there and messing up their livelihood. <laughs> That's honestly all I have to talk about with soil. The soil is not a big deal for me. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Usually if your first thing is worrying about your soil composition for your dying plant, you're not gonna wanna start it with soil. There's so many other factors like humidity. This is a big one. Alocasia love humidity. They love it so much so in fact 
that the moment I gave this one over 70% humidity, it exploded. The leaves darkened. Also, if your alocasia isn't unfurling its leaves, or if any of your plants aren't unfurling their leaves, it means that they are not getting enough humidity to be able to produce leaves effectively. That, or if you have like crazy high humidity in your plants, and your plants still aren't putting out good leaves, definitely repot your plant because it's probably crazy root bound. My Alocasia fry deck right now is living at 45 to 50% humidity, uh, which is just the humidity of my living room. And you can see how little the plants are coming in. This is the newest leaf compared to this. So it's really not happy with me. The problem is that it's so big that it, it won't, it will not fit in a greenhouse. So I can't really do anything for it other than wait until I can afford a Lavoie and then put it right next to the Lavoie. Hi, Raven. Hi. My Alocasia Adora, this guy. I keep this one in my bedroom um, in front of a lamp. It stopped growing out here altogether. Just completely stopped growing and it's losing a lot of the white. When I got this thing, it was a white machine. And this is, oh, we got a new leaf. Cute. It's really losing almost all of its white. It's because it wasn't getting enough light out here and it wasn't getting enough humidity. So I moved into my bedroom. It's right in front of my grow light, like literally grow light odora, like that close. And I rotate it every other day because every day that I wake up after I've rotated, it's leaning towards it. So you gotta keep rotating it to keep it even. So I think I said already, it gets about 60 to 70% humidity and it's growing very nicely. Like it's putting out new leaves very frequently without me having to really worry about its well-being. My Cupria. This guy lives at 80 to 100% humidity and he pops out leaves like crazy. I know you're like, Ashley, there is literally one leaf on your cupria. How can you say that? Well, this leaf came out a week ago and we already have, oh, right here. There's a child right there. You can barely see it here. Let me use my red nail. See that right there? Yeah, that's a child. And this plant was dead before. So this plant is a different plant than this one. So it grew this. This thing died in the bacteria culling uh, over the summer, and then it, the bulb grew out this new plant. And the new plant is now growing out a new leaf. So this has been in the greenhouse for three weeks. It only just put out this leaf a week ago, and now we're getting another one. And this is at the highest possible humidity. My Alocasia fry deck was growing like crazy when it was living at 80% humidity, and that was in my dorm room. But unfortunately, she's living a sad life now, and we have to we have to fix that. When it comes to light for Alocasia, it depends on the Alocasia, but if you have something really green, you really want really bright light. It can mean indirect, it can mean direct. If it's direct light, you're gonna want it a little bit away from the light source, maybe like five 10 feet but if it's indirect light you can have it honestly like right up next to the light source my alocasia adora gets bright direct light from a a nine watt led light bulb and it's loving life we need to talk about some guidelines when it comes to alocasia because everyone because everyone friggin hates alocasia because they don't know how to keep them alive i love them they're my probably second mm, third favorite genus of plants. I love them with my whole heart and soul. And the only reason I don't have more is because I honestly cannot afford the ones that I really want. So, alocasia grow from bulbs. This is important because it means if you cut off an alocasia leaf because you want to propagate it in water, that will not happen. You will have just cut off an alocasia leaf for no reason and it'll die eventually. Because it's a bulb, the only way that you can propagate alocasia, it can only be propagated by separation, which is where it grows new plants and then you take it out, put it in another pot somewhere and now you have two plants. Or you can leave it in the in the big plant. Um, here, let me show you an example. Oh, and he's got a new leaf coming out too. You can see here that this is a separate plant right here. And this is a separate plant and then there's these tiny little leaves down here and those are babies. Okay, this is important. Alocasia are martyrs. If you don't know what martyr is, it's basically something that sacrifices itself for the well-being of something else. For example, anytime on an Alocasia fry deck that a new leaf comes in, you will lose an old leaf. 
it will be like clockwork, especially during growing season. My allocation fry deck, I don't think my pot, cause this is two plants in here. I don't think that my pot has ever kept more than six leaves alive at the same time. And each plant never has more than four. If there's a fourth leaf, it means that one of them is about to really kick the bucket. Uh, and it will yellow and look gross and sick and tired and sad and then it'll just die and it eventually it will just fall off all on its own. Some people let their alocasia leaves completely wilt and die to the point where you can literally tug on it and it will just separate. However, as soon as I notice that an alocasia leaf is starting to die, I straight up cut it off. The reason I cut it off is because the energy that the plant is putting into trying to keep that leaf alive could easily go into bringing out the new leaf. Sometimes, and most of the time, especially on a fry deck, you will realize that a plant is literally losing a leaf and there's no new leaf to be found. And this might really make you scared. You might be like, oh my gosh, does that mean that it's just dying now? Is this just a sign that it's literally gonna die and there's nothing I can do? Nope, it just means that you can't see the new leaf that's coming out yet. Sometimes it might take an extra two days for it to come out. Sometimes it might come out before another leaf even starts to die. It honestly depends on your plant and the season and it's lighting and humidity and soil conditions. Another thing we need to talk about when it comes to alocasia are the spider mites. Alocasia are crazy spider mite magnets and that is because on most of these, you have these very small curves. So you can see that this leaf is wavy and spider mites like to make their tiny webs connecting the high parts over the divots. So that makes alocasia leaves very appealing to spider mites, unfortunately for us. The great thing about this is that it's very easy to wipe off because these leaves are so flat. All you need is, for me, honestly, I just use Dawn dish soap with some, well, like a wet, a warm, wet washcloth. And I just wipe the leaves down a couple of times, front and back and the tuberous stems. I do all of it. I don't spray them with neem oil just because alocasia leaves are super delicate and I don't really want to expose them to anything super crazy strong. Spider mites themselves aren't too bad. I would rather have spider mites on every single plant than to get mealybugs once. Spider mites are fine unless you have an infestation level situation on your hands, which you probably will not ever have. One time I voluntarily let spider mites live on one of my alocasia for a while and then I just checked one day and they weren't there anymore checked all the plants around them and they weren't there either so they, they all died somehow i don't know how i didn't take care of them but yeah spider mites aren't that bad if you see them literally don't panic unless it's like disgusting and infested and they're so thick that you can't even see your plant leaf through people freak out about spider mites a lot and they're really not that bad they're like I would say that they're probably less harmful than fungus gnats and way less annoying than fungus gnats. Okay, here's something else that's important. In case a leaf dies that is pregnant. Okay, so this is a pregnant leaf right here. This guy. This guy's like ready to be separated. Look at him. He's like, separate me. Look at that leaf. That's so pretty. Okay, so this is a pregnant leaf. Pregnant. Let's say that this guy died. Let's say that this guy got a bacterial infection and it was life or death and you needed to cut it off. But let's say that this hadn't emerged yet. Let's say that this is still in here, but you can see that it's gonna come out like any day now. Well, you can cut off the leaf up here, like right at the spot and leave all of this here. The, because this is still alive, just because you cut off the leaf doesn't kill this. So this will still be alive and it will come out a lot slower, but the leaf will still come out. I know this because before I even could see the pregnant leaf in one of my alocasia fridae, it got super sick with the bacterial infection back in summer and I had to cut off the pregnant leaf. Well, it wasn't pregnant yet, but it was going to be. It was like the newest leaf, you know? Eventually the thing wilted and curled down like a bobby pin. Like it was stiff and it curled down. But eventually after a month or so, the new, a new leaf came out and it took a really long time, but honestly, I was so worried because with alocasia, you literally have this one plant and that's it. And I was like, did I really just kill a whole plant? <laughs> but I didn't. So yeah, if you do need to cut it off, just make sure you cut it off up here so that you're leaving all of this intact so that it can put out another plant eventually. When it comes to repotting this plant, repot when it's not growing anymore, but is still healthy. So let's say that your plant looks so incredibly healthy, but it's not putting out a new leaf. It's probably root brown. It probably just needs you to give it a new home to live in. 
I should point out my alligator product is a very healthy plant, but I keep it on a shelf super high. And so it's right now it's it, the reason it's bowing down like this is because it bows for the light. So, um, it's not like wilting or anything. This is just alocasia change their shape. I would say every two days noticeably depending on where their light source is coming from they they move so much so okay let's move on to watering so when i water my alocasia i let their soil dry out completely before i even think of watering a plant this is because fungus gnats also love alocasia it's not just spider mites okay hold on i need to move this a little bit so fungus gnats are extremely popular with alocasia as well. So you're gonna wanna make sure that your alocasia aren't just constantly wet. Alocasia roots are super good at handling being wet. And it's because they really like the water, even though they're really succulent, uh, petioles and, and big stems are super tuberous. They really do like the water, but that doesn't mean that you wanna have your plant moist all the time. I wrote down some sizes so for my forage pot, I water it every four to five days. This cupria, I actually never water because I keep it in my greenhouse. And every two days I turn on my humidifier and I, the humidifier, basically the humidity and the fog because it fills up the whole thing that the, my greenhouse gets 100% humidity if I let my humidifier run for just 45 minutes. So that's usually what waters my plants in there. But about probably every two, two and a half weeks, I actually go in and I water the plants. Uh, because that's usually when they've dried out to a pretty good amount. Uh, four inch pots, I water those outside of the greenhouse every four to five days. And eight inch pots, which is what my fry deck is in and my odora, I water these every one and a half to two weeks. If they're putting out a new leaf, you better start pouring that water in there because it will suck up the water twice as fast. So if you have a four inch pot that's putting out a new leaf or you, you even see that it's pregnant or is like this one where it's in the process of putting one out, you're gonna wanna divide that time in half. So probably every six days for a big plant like this and every two days for something like that until the leaf detaches from the mother petiole. If your alocasia is browning also, it's because it doesn't have enough humidity. If your leaves aren't opening, it's because you don't have enough humidity. Really, people do not give their alocasia enough humidity. So now we're gonna talk about level of difficulty. So I've written down a few plants here before we really dig deep into alocasia species and prices. Uh, we're gonna talk about some level of difficulties. So I would say that the easiest alocasia I've ever taken care of is the alocasia fry deck. This thing is amazing. It just loves you as long as you're giving it light and humidity because this likes really bright light and high humidity, you're gonna kill it. It's gonna be hard to not kill it. Well, it's gonna be hard to kill the plant. When I mean kill it, I mean like you're killing it. Like you're doing a good job, congratulations. Anyways, easiest plant. I would say the next easiest plants are an alocasia zebrina which is also a reticulata, which is also a tigringa. All three of those plants are the same plant, but they have different like affinities. So a reticulata has a, it's an unofficial botanical word for this, for raven, for this leaf pattern, picture that I'll put right here. And a tigringa is just a zebrina that has really pointy leaves, but they're all the same plant. Then we have the alocasia adora, plain, not variegated. The variegated is very hard to take care of. The white melts so easy, like so easy. I was always having to cut off the dying sections to try to keep the rest of the leaf alive. The next easiest alocasia I would say is poly alocasia. Poly is actually fairly hard to take care of. Alocasia poly is also known as the African mass alocasia. I would say the next hardest alocasia to, to take care of is the alocasia cupria and the alocasia infernalis. These two alocasia are basically the same plant, but one of them has a different colorway. The next easiest I would say that's hard to take care of is Adora variegata. This has definitely put me through the ringer a little bit sometimes. And the hardest alocasia that you could possibly want to take care of, care of are jewel alocasias or any alocasia that has a smoky gray or white on it. Good luck. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to talk about a lot of alocasia. All right. Are you ready for this? Here I have listed 22 alocasia. The most, I'm just gonna like pop these pictures in here really fast. 
The easiest alocasia to take care of are the Lauderbachiana, the Alocasia Frydeck, the Alocasia Pink Dragon, the Alocasia Stingray, Alocasia Sarian, Alocasia Odora, Alocasia Poly slash Bambino. I believe that they're the same plant. Alocasia Lowrider, Alocasia Lutea, Alocasia Calcutta, and Alocasia Tiny Dancer. And pricing for these plants, I would definitely say if you're for small of these, you're gonna pay anywhere from eight to $15. For a medium of these plants, you're gonna pay anywhere from 15 to $35. And for a large of these plants, you're gonna pay anywhere from $35 to $50. I'm not saying that these should be the prices that people pay, I'm just saying that these are. The reason the range is so big is because when I got my baby allocation fry deck, I paid $8 for this one. It's amazing, I love it. Alocasia Adora, well, this is, this is the Varagata. I paid a lot of money for this, but, um, Regular Alocasia Adora, I've seen sell for like 20 bucks. I've seen uh, Alocasia Zebrina and Sarian sell for $30, so, but for small ones, smaller sizes. So these are the Alocasia Black Velvet, Alocasia Maharani, Alocasia Cupria, Alocasia infernalis caput. For these plants, these are all dwarf alocasia, and as you get to the more expensive ones, they're all really, except for this one, really inexpensive. So you're probably gonna pay 50 to $100 for any of these, depending on the seller. Out of these ones, I definitely think that the Maharani and the infernalis caput are gonna be the more expensive ones. Uh, I personally am not a fan of the Maharani. I know a lot of people literally love it, but it doesn't really tickle my pickle. Okay, here we go. These first two are confusing. The common name for these first two are Alocasia Dragon Scale, but I think I'm seeing the botanical name is Baginda. So here's this, just keep looking at this one. Then, uh, well, I guess I can't put two pictures on the screen at the same time in iMovie. So we're doing Beginda, okay? So this is Beginda or Dragon Scale, Dragon Scale Alocasia. The next one is the Alocasia Badinga, which is the Silver Dragon. Okay, the next plant on this list is Alocasia Reversa which has the opposite color scheme of the Badinga, which is the silver dragon. Then we have the Alocasia Imperialis, Alocasia Nebula Imperialis, which is a different leaf shape, Alocasia Melo, and Alocasia Nishihira. All of these Alocasia will run you minimum $100 to $250. Oh, and Adora Varagata, that should be on the list too. Nishikira actually is sold by Tennessee Tropicals every so often and they only sell them for about $35. But Tennessee Tropicals has amazing plants for sale for really low prices. So that's just because they're a responsible retailer and they don't want you to have to pay your soul to get a plant that you like. So yeah. I hope this answered some of your questions about alocasia. If you have a more specific question about your plant in general, please feel free to reach out to me on Instagram. If you think I forgot something, please drop it in the comments and maybe I'll do an alocasia part two video. In alocasia, you're not gonna want to buy if you are inexperienced and or do not have a greenhouse. Absolutely do not buy the Beginda or the Badinga, which is the green dragon or so dragon the dragon scale or the silver dragon do not buy any infernalis or a Melo. don't buy that either um and i probably wouldn't buy a reversa 
Thank you so much for watching this houseplant video. Please make sure to leave a like. Please subscribe. Please tweet me at plantmeashley on Twitter. Please follow me on Instagram at plantmeashley. Follow my cat on Instagram at raventhecat.jpg. Please make sure to turn on those bell notifications so that you're notified every time I get a video. And please leave some video suggestions in the description. I always want to know what you guys want to see, especially since it changes so often. You say bye. Oh, okay. <laughs> She's done. Oh, by the way, my shirt, this is a fruits basket shirt. I love fruits basket. And look, you have all the Zodiac animals on the sleeve. Anyways. Let me know if you guys want a Weeb Wednesday where I talk about the animes that I watched that week and review them. All right. Bye.